What's going on, Muscle Bully? We'll wait a few seconds and then um, we'll get the party started. I'm waiting for a couple people to come in. And tonight is going to be a crazy night as we have an exclusive guest coming in by the name of Khan of Faux King Bullies. And um, it's going to be an amazing, amazing time. All right, here we go. Of course, boy Zach's going to be in the building. Except now we just got to wait for cons. Right. What's up, bro? What's going on, man. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Go ahead and invite Khan in on this one. And yeah, we'll get the ball rolling, man. Hell yeah. We got a lot to give away tonight. So we got about 20 entries. What's going there on? He is. There's what the man right going there. On? What's, going on? What's the deal, guys? Man, um, first of all, I want to say thank you for taking the time out. Um, I know you're busy uh, with that rubber glove over there, man, with all them <laughs> studs. So, um, for taking a few minutes off and uh, joining us tonight. Not a problem. Not a problem. I appreciate you guys. All right, so you, you're out of Chicago. Let's let's just cut to the chase. Um, how is your relationship with R. Kelly still? <laughs> I like R. Kelly's music, man. What I did is on him. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, I, I his music is always going to be there, you know. Uh, but I don't get into all that crazy shit. <laughs> well, one thing we wanted to do tonight, like, just like – um. We wanted to ask you, we got a list of questions that we want to ask you that you're probably, I don't know, maybe you're used to getting them and maybe you're not, but our whole goal is to shed a positive light in the community and, and, and capture your vision towards the bully breed. So let's go ahead and just, um, I'll start off with the first question. Um, what was the moment in time that you remember that you said, okay, I caught the bully bug. Like, I got to start doing bullies. I got to start breeding them. What inspired you to even begin breeding bullies? Um, well, I always liked dogs since I was, you know, at least 10 or 12 years old. So, um, as far as bullies, I think it's probably just searching on the internet, you know, and yeah. the first dog that really got me into looking at bullies was a dog named King Kamali out of uh, California. Yeah. Uh, Carl his, Pratt. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was, he's an amazing dog. I think he's, uh, passed now, but. I love that dog, and that's uh, and then another dog on his yard that I really, really like more than than even King Kamali was. Um, it was a a blue tri dog named Rain or something like that, and then his mom was or his mom was something like that named uh, Bullicious, and yeah. that's where I caught, caught the bully bug, and then that's where it started. Really, I mean, that was a long time ago. So yeah, how long ago <laughs> was it? Uh, shoot. I mean, I've been into the dogs, like, on and off, maybe almost 15 years now. But oh, as far as going going crazy and doing what I do now, at least eight or nine. Okay. You know what I mean? And first of all, everybody tuning in, um, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and interview Khan. We got a bunch of stuff to give away on Muscle Boy. So we're going to periodically, we got about 21 entries um, for the contest. So Man. periodically, we're going to stop and doing these giveaways. We're going to be giving away Muscle Boy products, x dog equipment as well. And um, if you have any questions for Khan, let's save it towards the end. We'll get it in there. And if they're a quality question, we'll go ahead and read them. Um, please make, sure you guys share the, make sure you guys share this live on your Facebook. People come over, check it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I mean, for sure. It, it's, it's nice to win free shit, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on, man? What, what's up going on with you, Wandale? We're, we're, Introduce we're getting, us. We really haven't really met as much as far as on the internet, but oh yeah, you haven't met Zach. No, yeah. not not uh, not formally. Yeah, okay. no, formally, no. For so, sure. Nice to meet you, buddy. I appreciate you. Yeah. yeah so no. here's the thing, Con. Zach's an entrepreneur. Um, how I met Zach, I met him probably what we know by each other about six months, maybe. Yeah, about six seven months. He he's he's just like us when it comes to being a go getter. Like for example. He brought value first. He's like, hey, he hits me up. He messages me. He goes, hey, I can do some banners. I can do some stuff for you guys. 
And I go, okay, let me see your work, right? And he just delivered. He delivered, delivered, over-delivered. He's got some good quality work. So if anybody is needing bully banners or greeting banners, this is the guy because not only does he do, does a great job, he just turnaround time is quick. And it's efficient. See, that is and something so, I, didn't even, I didn't even know. So now, <laughs> now I know. Yeah. He's somebody I highly recommend, man. So if you guys are you're tuning in, lock him in for sure. For sure um, just for don't, sure. Take him, don't take too much of his time away from us over here because we, we got him on a retainer over here. <laughs> but uh, I know Zach's got some questions, too. We're, gonna, we're just going to go back and forth. Um, he's an inspiring bully breeder as well. He's sound mind. He cares about a clean dog. And so... You know, I think this is going to be a great conversation and a great learning, a learning opportunity for all of us. Yeah, yeah for, sure. for sure. Go ahead, uh, Zach. I, like, well, the first question I had for him was, what was the bully that, like, made you want to get a bully? So, I mean, he kind of pretty much answered that one. So, uh, uh, my, uh, uh, if you had to choose one dog, <laughs> The outcross to for the rest of your life, who would you choose? Excluding your yard, like you can outcross, so you got to go find something else. Just if you had one dog that you could only use for the rest of your career, who would you outcross to? Man, that's a tough question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we're gonna uh, hit you with some hitters tonight. That, that That's a tough question. I don't want to, I don't want to sound cocky and shit like that, but I don't want nobody it's hard to. for me to, it's hard for me as of right now to pick a, a, a dog because there's a lot, like a lot of dogs out there. Um, I feel that that hasn't met my standard as far as I want in my program, but there is a lot of dogs that I like. I can't really name one dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of dogs I like. I don't, I don't want to just want to name one dog because it's like, it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't want to do that. You know, I like, I like, I like Aaron from the, uh, the, the Europe. I like, um, uh, uh, the chocolate dog. What's his name? Um, I forgot his name. Apollo, uh, from Europe. So I use, I like a lot of Europe dogs. You know what I mean? Cause I've seen a lot of the dogs here already. Zero, zero is a really nice dog, but he's from a line of mine anyway, you know? Yeah. So he's doing his thing right now. And, uh, uh, there's a lot of dogs that I like, and then there's a tough you know what it's 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 tough to name that question because yeah. as at this point I haven't really sought out to outcross yet because I don't haven't bred so tightly enough for me to go that far yet. It's yeah. I'm still at least four generations out before I even think about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's interesting. So. Let's talk about your vision. What inspired your vision? Where, what was that one dog where you go, okay, this is going to be, this is what's going to catapult my vision and this is the direction I want to go? Because this is going to segue into other things and other questions on the line. But when did it, uh, when did you get into, you know, when was that exact moment? My favorite bully of all time, besides my dog Rocco, is Taz, uh, which, oh. is owned, which is also owned by uh, my partner and good friend, Gabriel Madara. Madara is also. Uh, the producer of uh, Rockomania. So, you know, when I when I first met Gabriel, he turned out to be a great friend of mine, probably one of my best friends now. Um, it was through two friends of mine that I used to be on a mechanic. And, we okay. used to, you know, a, my friend used to work at Infinity and I work at Acura and stuff like that. And then he was like, and then we were talking about a dog and stuff like that. And then a friend of mine was talking about, you know, Miyagi and stuff like that. And there's a dog uh, that his friend bred to. So I came... And met both of the three of them at a dog park. And Taz blew my mind. Taz was 10 months old. And what I thought I had good good bullies, I scrapped the whole yard for really? that dog. And, 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 and that's where it started. You know, that's where, where I met Gabe. And we partnered ever, ever since. And whatever stuff you see out of my yard is, off, is really came from uh, Gabe's yard uh, off of Lola. So I spun it a little bit harder than he does because he's a little more busy. But, um, you know, that's how it really started. You know, Taz was – Taz changed my mind. He's just an incredible dog. That was a, a – that dog, that you, when you posted him, I think that was the first time I ever reached out, and I was just like, holy shit, right? And then um, – <laughs> so how hard was it for you to make that decision? Because you got a lot of breeders out here, when you think about it, man, they've got a yard full of dogs, they have their vision, and then all of a sudden they see some, something like Taz – and they go, oh, shit, we, I've got to scrap my whole yard. 
Like how hard of a decision was it that? Was, it was it, it wasn't hard. What was not what I had was not even close. What I had mm -hmm. was probably like compared to him was like anything, I mean, like a pit bull. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I yeah, had yeah. I had classic type dogs. Which they're nice, they're stru sound structure and stuff like that. I had Champion Charlie and all that stuff. But again, I only, I scrapped them off. You know what <clears> I mean? I, scrap I, I didn't scrap them as, as throw them out or call yeah. them. I just don't use them anymore. They're still here. They're alive. They're 12, 13 years old, thriving still, you know. And, mm -hmm. But I just don't breed them, you know. It's just, this is, it's just, Taz just changed my idea of what an American bully is. You, you, you look at him and you see all that muscle. You see the bone and you see the head. He's so compact. Yeah. All put together and with, you know, with good drive, it, it's just, it was something, it, it's like, you know, something you never seen, like I've never seen. So it completely just, just changed my whole concept. Yeah, what, yeah it, it just yeah. completely changed it. So when you said you're, you're still so far from using an outcross, like what, what is your, how far do you go before you feel it's time to pull something new in? I think I would probably have to be seven or eight generations in of all top and bottom of my stuff before I even do that. Because I don't do any inbreeding. I only line breed my stuff. Yeah. So, so I don't really try to put myself in the corner like that. So I yeah. have to do more line breeding, you know, here and there and stuff like that. Or sometime I'll do like a, a far back line breeding, you know, like my stuff would be four generations back and then I'll bring it right back up. And stuff like that. It, it's it's. I haven't done it so any type of anything tight for me to see any craziness that I need to come out. It's yeah, been, I mean, yeah, it's been yeah, good so far for me, so it. I think I'm gonna keep it that way. But yeah. I think maybe seven, eight generations down, when I have a top and bottom of my of my the pedigree, then I'll look out. You know, but there is a lot of really nice dogs out there that I like. It's just right now, like putting me in the spot is like, oh shit. You know, it's it's hard for me to say to to remember at the moment. Yeah. So as you're coming up. um who were maybe two or three breeders that really inspired you that you kind of looked up to that uh, maybe mentored you a little bit or maybe you just kind of studied something in some way or shape or form? I wouldn't say I, I have uh, a mentor exactly, but I had good friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, one person is my buddy Gabe, obviously. He yeah. gave me, you know, what I have now today. So I always thank for that. And then Nico, probably one of the realest dude I've ever met, you know what I mean? As far as a uh, friend uh, and, and, and hustle, you know what I mean? He taught me really how to, how to, how to, you know, hustle, how to, how to do things. You know what I mean? Like I ain't scared of shit. Just do it. You know what I mean? And that's how, yeah. that's the attitude we both have. And we're probably like, we're probably one of those, Started from the bottom, now we're here. Type of type of friend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. I give well, him a lot of props. He 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 believed in me, so you know that's that's uh, one thing. That's one one person that I really appreciate. Okay, so in a in a community where a game where it seems like a lot of people are like crabs in the bucket, how did you guys make that work? You know, being in the same city. You know, like he's in from Chicago too, right? Like yeah, yeah. There's something like a, there's like a unique dynamic about Team Midwest in that Midwest area where you guys are making it work compared to other groups and cliques or <clears throat> what I've seen going up. I've seen a lot of so-called friends divide. I've seen a lot of turmoil, backstabbing. How did you guys make it work? Uh, you know what? We keep it kind of business-wise. We, we share stuff, you know what I mean? We don't, hi we don't, we share information. We share studs. We share, you know, if we have to uh, place the dog out, we ask each other first, stuff like that, or, um, basically just share information and support each other. I mean, you know, you want your friends to succeed too. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, yeah. it's hard to, it's hard to put it. I think, it, I think why, it falls why on the first thing. Work for other people. I don't understand that. Cause I've always like, if I see something and I'm doing it, I want to make it work first for me. And then I'll bring you in because if it failed for me, why the fuck would I want to bring you in to fail with me? You know, it's, it's not yeah. the way I, I, I want to do things, you know? So, yeah. uh, so like all the team West, West Midwest, uh, guys, you know, here it's, we all work together. We've kind of shared the same blood. We all cross here and there and stuff like that. And we, and we share the, the blood that we all cross in here and there, whatever, you know what I mean? But just seeing each other make dogs and make money and 
and, and you know, and be a team. You know, I mean, it's really not nothing hard to it. A lot of people just want to be on top by themselves. I'm not sure. You know, I mean, I, I'm not sure. It's it's. I I rather I rather have my friends be there for me and be there with me than than just being by myself. Really, you know, what I mean, I have friends outside of dogs that I that's forever be family, and I have uh, friends friends inside of dogs that forever be family. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, with that being said, when it comes to taking a stud, like, right, you guys seem to have a, a systematic way to market a stud. For those out there listening, if they had a stud, <laughs> what would be your A to, to C plan or A to, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G plan on how to market that stud? Um, it's kind of like, if I tell you I have to kill type of stuff, right? No, nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, one thing I feel like people forget is promotion, right? Yeah. Because be before Facebook, there was like American Bully World. There was the Dirty South group. There was the XL. There was the Edge group. And then there was the MSN before that. People forget you have to market your brand before you even have to market your stud. So no one really know who you are besides your dog is, is a little bit, you know, if your dog is on, who are you? You know what I mean? So you have to market your brand first. And then one thing I have to tell people is like, make sure you produce off the stud first. If you're new, you know what I mean? If you just have one, out of a sudden you have one badass dogs, right? Dog, right? And yeah. You have to at least show people this dog can produce, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, yes, that's really nothing else to do do about it. It's like I promote my dog kind of like I would say if, if if you don't know me, if you don't know me right out, outside of dogs, you would probably think I'm arrogant. And that's probably like a lot of people on Facebook. But the yeah. thing yeah. is, when I when I do that stuff, it generates it generates <laughs> comments, it generates hate, <laughs> it generates uh curiosity generates all that what it does is bring people to your platform and a lot of people are scared to be themselves or be whatever because they don't like the backlash i don't really care about that you know it brings positive and it brings negative and it's okay you know what i mean well i think i think you hit it right now like one of the biggest superpowers that i've ever learned is not giving a shit about anybody's opinion because you're gonna get that backlash right you're gonna have 50 percent of people supporting you and 50 percent not supporting you and if you focus right. on that 50 percent of supporting you that's all you need to do when you think about it the best most lucrative businesses ever existed jesus versus the devil <laughs> crips versus blood Bulls versus uh, fucking Pistons. Lakers, yeah. You know what I mean? Yankees versus it's rivalries. The rivalry is what creates competition. Competition Left breeds versus excellence, right. man. Yeah. And, you know, it breeds excellence. It, it, it pushes you. A lot of people want to be stagnant and, and just be in one spot. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. So out of all your productions, I know this is going to be a very challenging. Uh, maybe, maybe it's not a challenging. Maybe it, it's an easy question for you. To this date, what has been your favorite production and why? Uh, like my own or like as far as like just my own? Just yeah, my your own, own. Like by myself. Yep. Yeah. I would probably say Grim. Grim. Yeah. I why? would probably say Grim. Grim is uh, Grim is my my first bring ever from Rocco, off of Rocco, and right off the bat, uh Rocco pr proved that he uh, he's he can produce. He's a producer. So from Grimm, you know, how Grimm was gr becoming what he is today, proved that Lineage, you know, he's, he's probably my favorite production so far. Gotcha. Yeah. So what, There's a lot your, of what I like, but he's, he's probably did the most. What's your process in order to know who your keepers are? Ooh. Because mm. mm. I feel like, you know, I feel like I've seen a lot of people let a dog go that they should have kept because they picked too early. Yeah, oh, yeah, sense? I don't really pick too early. Uh, yeah. Honestly, when I breed, I don't really breed a lot, maybe once or twice a year, even if twice a year, if if, if that, you know what I mean? Maybe once. Yeah. I usually do it, I know I usually do once a year. But I usually keep my pups till at least 16 weeks. When I breed, when you breed for yourself, you can keep it as long as you want, you know? That's why I tell people, like, 
when you want to do this right, make sure you have financial stability behind it so you don't have to. So you don't have to be desperate to sell dogs that you don't want to sell or to sell dogs early that you want to keep. You know what I mean? It's, it, you will, your program can, can make a be break on that dog you sold. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. and this, just like I said, it's, it's with Rocco, I was lucky. You know what I mean? I got really lucky with Rocco because Rocco was sold at eight weeks old. And, uh, and he was, he was almost sold multiple times, you know, to ABKC judges, people overseas, people in South America, you know, and then we finally sold him. And then for some reason, I don't know, faith, whatever, it, the person sold him back to me and <laughs> I couldn't pass it up. You know what I mean? I couldn't pass Holy it up. Holy shit. I mean, you know, he sold him back to me at 11 months. I, I, for ten grand and a first pick pup back, and he, and that's double what I sold it to him for. And Rock yeah. was a five thousand dollar dog back then, and that was pretty a lot of money back then. You know what I mean? Like almost freaking seven years ago. Um, Why did you buy him back though? Like, like he was you... when he showed me the picture. I knew I could take him places. You mm. know what I mean? It wasn't even something that that I wanted completely con control of. I yeah. wanted to just co own it. I told him to send it back. I can. I can. I can campaign him for it for him but he wanted the money so I, I gave him the money and you know and then I gave him Big Red Big Red also came back to me what? because he was having family issues and stuff like that so I don't know it, it was crazy you know my the journey yeah. of the American Bully stuff was crazy so do you think if Rocco would have never came back do you think Rocco would still be in a position no and no I was too loud he was too yeah. quiet yeah, so I, I'm a little too loud, and then so it took it took like it was like just that split second of a deal that pretty much could have altered the future of what we know today is is how many dogs Rocco's on is yeah. being decided. Yeah, it, it, it took this much because Rocco was not n never known to anybody for eleven months. Yeah, like, no one knew who Rocco was. You know what I mean? And when Rocco came back, blew my mind. You know, the, I like sold the dog, and he was like not that, not like that. And he came back, and like what the. <laughs> and my wife, Ruth, she, she yeah, looked, she didn't know, you know. So uh, I brought him back and put him in the sunroom, and I told him, "Look, go look." And she said, "What the hell is that? That's not a dog. <laughs> 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 it's a freaking gorilla bear, you know what I mean? He's yeah. a gentle giant, though, man. That that boy, you know, it's it's he's a he's a great dog, dude. Uh, yeah, I can, man. You know, bravado. He's probably like the he's the simplest easiest fucking funnest dog to have around <laughs> like you can tell himself i can leave him out the kennel he doesn't do shit like i'll come home he's right on the ottoman a lot of his personality traits i see when you post videos or Ruth posts videos or photos i'm like dude it's a splitting image you can yeah. tell that rocco blood runs deep in him and just based off his personality i would take i don't care i don't could be a fucking labradoodle if he had that personality you know right right it's it even matter. some dogs are different some dogs are, some dogs and lines are different you know yeah i've yeah. had a few lines that i dislike and, <laughs> and i got rid of them or don't even breed them and then this, this is it that found this one yeah it, so, it, stemmed, it stemmed from his great grandma lola she's that way she's yeah. really gentle she's really nice she's really mellow she's amazing man like yeah. that girl's amazing so this is a question that me and um zach we kind of pondered together and we kind of start thinking about it and we wanted to ask you this how would the bully game look today if Khan never existed or stepped foot into the bully game? Who would be one of the top kennels out there that has absolutely no Rocco blood? Mm. Let's just say you didn't jump in the game and Rocco didn't exist. There was Where would the bully game be today? Man, yeah. I, I don't know. It'd probably just be Bashar. <laughs> it, it probably would just be Bashar still. I know that, um, you know, they had a little stack off between Cash and Beanstalk, and that didn't really sit well with you. Um, it seemed like it kind of bothered you. Why did that bother you so much, if you don't mind me asking, if that's not a question to... Uh, no, no, I'll answer it. It's not because I don't, I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Do what I think. But I, I felt he was being set up to lose. Yeah. And I, I've, I've been there. I've seen it. I've seen it many times, you know? And the thing is, like, even though I'm not, a, like, really friends with... Uh, Jeremiah, he yeah. still have some have the blood in his yard. So I'm 
for as me, I'm always trying to protect the butt. You know what yeah. I mean? So bringing him there is your your number one. You gave him two months time to to bulk his dog up if you want to stack up. You know what I mean? And yeah. then and then you going to his to his uh, his place for stack off. Yeah. So your dog's not even used to the heat or whatever in Florida. So your dog's not really that great down yeah. there. So he's he's having heart problem breathing and stuff. And I didn't like it because you know I don't like putting dogs through that type of stress just for a stack off, just for to measure your ego, or whatever. Like or who who who's a better dog, stuff like that. You know what I mean? But overall, I feel like Cash was a better dog. But I just felt like as far as that stack off went, he was just he who he was he was cheated a little bit, you know, because he yeah. came there as, with a judge for the best overall dog, but somehow came the, it ended up being the best the widest dog, you know. If that was yeah. the case, then Cash yeah, would not win. Period. Why even go down there and lose five thousand dollars? Yeah. You know? But but in the <laughs> end, you know, as far as negativity wise and stuff like that, he got the following. Right, people well, got to understand. Even though you lost, you gained his followers to your yeah. page, to your awesome. stuff like yeah. that. So, you know, it's not a bad thing. But I, at that point, you know, I just didn't like that he was being set up. It would have been better at a neutral place. That's really all that bothered me. That's that's it. And he yeah. didn't take it the way like I wanted him to take it. So it kind of went a little bit, but it doesn't really matter now. Yeah. yeah, it's a you know, like you said, is it, a catch twenty two that you can look at it as a, an investment as well. You know, like yeah, I'm sure he got that five stacks back just off, um, you know, yeah. just the notoriety. Yeah. Stuff. yeah, for sure. So, you produce this dog named Colossus, and um, it was just probably to me. Again, this is what segue into the marketing side because I'm always big into the marketing side, and I study people like you, and. The way you set up that set that up, I've never seen it before in my entire <laughs> I don't life. Think it would, I don't know if it would ever be recreated. And that was that was all Roots' idea. Really? <laughs> that was remarkable. Like I was just like, was it how, how many how many stud services did you sell within I guess that hour or whatever? I sold 100 stud credit in 10 minutes, and so and Facebook shut and, and Facebook <laughs> shut my the post down, and I probably would have sold more if they didn't shut it down, but. Thank God they shut it down because he he's way too busy now. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you this, you know, how much did that influence uh, Logan's stud service? Um, you know what the thing with Logan is, like I said, my buddy Gabe is a little bit so busy that we don't get updates of Logan. Logan's a really nice dog, right? Yeah. He's he's a great, great dog. Great producer. He's from great lineage. You know, he's the last Louis V son that was bred with legit real like ship semen from the actual dog before he died. So, wow. uh, so, um, now the thing is like a lot of people don't use Logan because we, they haven't seen updates and I've been trying to get my buddy Gabe to, to give me updates. It's just, he's been so busy doing other stuff. And, and the thing is, you know, I'm not going to push him. He does what he wants, you know, but I'm always here for when he needs me. So, you know, yeah. it, it, it really didn't affect Logan's, uh, uh, thing at all it was always neutral and the same like that all the time well i just thought maybe shit you know people would go to the source more now you know what i mean just because uh, you know when you think of a dog like Colossus, i know it's a collaboration of the stud and the bitch but you would think that you know maybe he he, he would have got a lot more breedings put you know after that situation. Think, yeah it's all about you know with the stud game is all about um continuous hosting the uh, dog continuous continuous, you know, showing people your dog, stuff like that, you know, or there's some, there's some dog like G2. I don't really don't like to update people because he's probably one of my favorite dog here. I don't really like to breed him that many outside because I'm planning to use him more in house. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So in your mind, what's the biggest downfall to chasing a hype stud over using a line breed or something inside of what you've already got? Like, how do you feel about just taking a random dog that they boosted on and everybody's like, oh, he's bad, he's bad, which I'm not taking nothing from the stud. No, no, no. Because lineage don't match. <laughs> it's like you're like, I'm going to go use this hype stud, and then you don't get the same results in the long run. So, like, I feel like a lot of people chase a hype dog, which I don't knock the stud owner because everybody's trying to get stud credits and make a living. You know what I'm saying? Right, but right. Sometimes I feel like that can alter what we have going on at the breed. 
pulling strings at that point. Well, that that comes down to your question maybe 20 minutes ago. When at, when when am I going to look to outcross? You know what I mean? It's like I'm so set in what my vision, my vision, what I want for my yard that I really don't really out there chase a hype stud yet or whatever, you know, because I'm set. I know what I want, you know what I mean? I think people who do that as as far as they're not set in yet, they 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 haven't found the look they want or 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 the vision they're they're searching for. So they're doing that. And once you you create that dog from that hype stud, then yeah. you're gonna see like, oh, this is what I want. And then then you start looking for that general bloodline and stuff like that, and put all that together. You know what I mean? I think yeah. people who number one. The hype stuff, I don't want to call that hype stuff chaser because a lot of people call my dog hype stuff, stuff like that. You know, I just want to say people who 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 like to breed to uh uh famous uh, or, or popular stud or, or or one that's in the now is because number one, it's it's easier to sell puppies, okay? Um you know, it's easier to gain social media uh uh what is it, followers from it because people who like the same thing will follow each other who like the same thing. You know what I mean? You don't follow someone else who, who do some di different stuff, you know? Yeah. So, and that's really it, you know? I mean, the the, the, the money part is the biggest part, I feel, uh, as far as people uh, chasing and breeding to a hype stud. I mean, but you never know that hype stud might might turn out to be a producer, you know what I mean? Sometimes a producer don't... Sometimes a hype stud is a producer. You don't know. <laughs> people call Rocco or Grim a, a hype stud, and they're producers, so it's... And they earned it. So, you know, in an era where it seems like our community or where a lot of people, you know, um, really hype up or I guess try to build their programs on females, it seemed like you kind of went the opposite direction. And you have this probably it's arguably if not, I mean, it's right up there um, when it comes to the stud lineup. There's not a better stud lineup in in the world. You know, uh, you, you went the opposite direction. You know, you're like, shit, you know, like. Cause I don't, I don't ever, I rarely see you talk about your, your bitches. I hide my females. <laughs> I do it on purpose. Root have all my bitches. Oh really? You know, I have, I have five, six year old dogs that I don't breed. I haven't breed. You know what I mean? That's amazing dogs. Like, like uh, Jugnaud's mom. She's probably four years old before I made a first litter off her and produced Jugnaud. It takes me. A little bit to look, you know, to produce a male and stuff here and there, and then put everything together. I might produce it's a male not, four years it. from now, from and then I want to use the that male to the, a bitch that's four years old. That compliment, you know, a lot of people want to all breed so fast that they breed the female to a stud that doesn't compliment the bitch. You know what I mean? So, True. you know, it's I have I I have a, a I have more more bitches than studs. I tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah that's uh, you know that's, that's that's i guess that's a secret that you guys you should that's a golden nugget that you guys should uh definitely tie in um if you guys have any questions i promise you we're going to save it towards the end and give con some time to answer all your questions that you guys have just keep it about you know um about the topic about the vision um and you know let's keep it positive i know I that i'll be able to read the question if you see it let me know read it for me i, I don't know you know okay I don't, I don't know why i can't see nothing all right, so let's, let's let's segue into another vision of yours, uh, Nano Bulls. Let's talk about that. W what inspired that, and why are you going? What direction are you still going that direction? Uh, I I'm, I personally uh, am not breeding too many of that, but I want people to understand the vision that I, I have. You know, uh, yeah. because a lot of people want to breed these short, ten, uh, twelve inches and shorter dogs, but they forget that dogs got to be dogs, you know what I mean? They have to be able to walk. They have to be able to use the bathroom themselves. They have, they, they have to be a, the dog. They don't have to be, you know, American Pitbull, Terrier, ADBA type of stuff, jumping off trees and stuff like that. They have to at least walk to go to yeah. the bathroom, you know? I see. And then a lot of people <clears throat> want to do that. I wanted to have that vision for people to create smaller dogs uh, and get away from from breeding the displacic type dogs and all that crazy, so that's why I really put that into uh, into the my vision as far as creating that we 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 produce a bunch of really nice short dogs. You know, it's just I don't really promote that much as much because I haven't gone as far to it as 
as I do with my American bullies. But I do have dogs that's 12 inches tall, maybe 11 and a half inches tall, but they can still jump on a couch, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's from yeah. blood, blood as far as Joker's Wild, Bait, uh, um, Devil Spit, you know, all those blood in that they call exotics that some people took it too far, you know what I mean? And yeah. I try, I'm trying to scale it right back with people. I mean, a lot of people won't like it, but, you know, because they, they're so far in, like, like, some people are, they don't want to, they don't want to correct all the issues uh, those short dogs have. And, and I don't, I don't really like it. I don't really say anything about it. I don't really care. But, but like I said, for you to make a change, you're going to have to, you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to do it yourself. And you're going to have to show people how it's done. So, you know, we've created dogs like Stan Lee, which is the dog's probably 10 inches tall, big head. Yeah. He can still move. He can still walk, but he can, he look just as exotic as anyone else except his structure is perfect, you know? Yeah. You know, and, and we did that with one breeding. And we did a second breeding with Joker's Wild, and, and we got more amazing dogs off of that. So, you know, that's, I, I just want to do that so people have a chance to breed short dogs, but make it correct, you know? Makes sense. When, so, it seems like your blood is just like, it, I mean, it's becoming a pandemic and just about, uh, you know, any successful kennel out there, a big name kennel that's going out there. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely in conversation that either they have it or they're bringing in or some kind of some, some offspring of what you're doing is, is a part of their program. How does it make you feel like what's, how does it make you feel and, and how important is you to help build other kennels and other programs? You know what? If people spend money with me, I always want them to build, build, be great. You know what I mean? A lot of yeah. kennels came off of Rocco, Grim, Big Red. You know, as of right now, Colossal. You know, all, all that. You know, all that dog, those dogs, uh, all the kennels that come off of that. You know, if you spend that type of money, I don't want you to lose. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's very important. I mean, it, it's very important because not only is it good for for them, it's good yeah. for me because it carries the lineage out even further than I could carry it, you know what I mean? So the more, the merrier. A lot of people talk about exclusivity, right? But you're, 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 you're bottlenecking your bloodline to just you and your friends and stuff like that. And it will never, ever be get used by anyone else. If you're all about the breed, you should be able to share that out and, and let it grow, you know what I mean? Sure. You know, I mean, there's a lot. Of, if everyone does the same thing, we will have a bunch of bloodline that we can be able to use out here, you know what I mean? But some people just won't do it. And their dogs are nice, but they won't do it. And then they, they complain why they're relevant five years from now, you know what I mean? So let's talk about, uh, when we're talking about, like, your bloodline and other programs, what are some of the up-and-coming dogs that are, let's say three, four generations outside of, uh, outside of Rocco that you're, you're seeing now that you're going, Oh, that dog, that dog has an ability to have that become a big name household in the community. Uh, well, you know, the top dog right now, zero, he's three Rocco's Rocco's great grandson, right? Okay. His grandson, right? Zero. Yeah. That's probably one dog. Um, and then as far as the stream dog, uh, off of, uh, big red, big Papa, he, he he has the hype as at the moment right now as far as uh off of uh um uh, or off of big red to a to a Rocco daughter i think stuff like that um and there's a bunch you know what i mean it's, yeah yeah like, there, there's there's bronco uh, there's uh you know there's uh if you go on my page you'll see all of them i really like to share i really like to share yeah. everyone's production if you go to my page, just go to the albums and you'll see all the Grim production, the Big Red production, and all that stuff. And I'm really proud of them all. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. really, they didn't come off of my yard, but I'm, I'm proud of them as much as they are. You know what I mean? No, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. So let's talk, let's segue into another part of your vision. And that's your, your, your registry. What inspired you to create a registry? And um, <laughs> how was your first initial experience? Man, it's a tough one. It's still, it's still tough. You know what I mean? It, it's tough doing it uh, with just a few people and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Because we're so busy with that and we're so busy with the dog that... Uh, but when we started in 2019, 
it was going great, and then COVID hit. Yeah. You know what I mean? COVID, COVID killed the momentum completely for the registry, and then we had to wait a few years, um, you know, to get it right back up. But, you know, the thing is, a lot of people understand uh, what the registry goal is, you know. The, my inspiration for, to do that was because there was too much inconsistency in the breed still, and there's still too many, too much paper hanging still in, in the American Bully. So with uh, bbkcdogs.com, the registry, every dog that's being bred have to be DNA profiled. Mm. So you can register your dog with the, with the registry, we'll register the dog, but as soon as you breed the dog, the parents have to be uh, re uh, DNA profiled too. So not only that the stud got to be DNA profiled, the mom also has to be DNA profiled. So if someone buys a puppy off of you and they were like, hey, I want to make sure they came off of these parents, they can challenge it and, and we can prove it. And the lineage will be a lot more consistent down the line. It's a slow pace, but at the end, it's going to be way better than what, what we want, we will ever see. You know what I mean? It's like we said, it's, it's a marathon for me with the registry. I'm not in it. I'm not, I already have enough money off the dog side. The registry is not about the money. It's, a, uh, you know, it's about preserving the breed and making the breed more consistent. You know, that's really it. You know, that's, that's where my mind is. It seems like there was an incident, I, I guess the last week or so, or maybe a week or so ago where it, it's, that probably would have played a pivotal role, you know, um, not to, you know, to bring up any drama <laughs> or anything, but it, you know, like I could see, you know, a lot of people, like, I think it just gives you such an advantage to do because it, like you said, it's not about the money. It's about the, the, the purpose and the integrity um, uh, and the longevity of building a better community where there is no bullshit. Right. That's, that's exactly why I did it. So, you know, there, there is no bullshit. And a lot of people, the, the bullshit won't, won't register with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. The real people that really want it done right and stuff. And you know, it adds, it adds, it'll add value to your kennel. A lot of people don't understand, like people will gain more trust off of you. Like, hey, my dog's a DNA profile through here, both the parents and, and the, the stud and, and the female and the, the dam. You don't have to worry about if, if it being off this dog or not. You know what I mean? Sometimes people are still in the cheating mode here, which which I, is stupid. That's why Rocket Blood is pretty consistent because everyone who breeds to the dog get what they get what they want and get what they get because all my studs are DNA profile, right? And yeah, then yeah. they can check <laughs> back all they want. They don't have to be afraid of. Hey man, can you can you pull your the dog on video? Can you do this? Then do that, man. I don't do none of that stuff. I tell you straight off the bat, I don't give a shit what you want. My dog's DNA profile. You either use them, you don't use them. But yeah. I can guarantee you, you will get what you paid for. I don't play none of that, that, that crazy games with people switching studs, semen, stuff like that. It's not me, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's just stupid, you know? It's once you fuck one, one customer up like that, there goes your whole, <laughs> your whole credibility and your whole program. What, what do you think the biggest health <laughs> problem in the community is right now that we have? What is the biggest problem? Yeah, like the biggest health issue you see. I think it's heart murmur. You know, yeah. a lot of people are still breeding dogs that <clears throat> that they don't know that has a heart murmur. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then that's the biggest issue. A lot of people, you know, also don't understand that these dogs are not one of the best breathing dog out there, you know. So breed better nares, breed better breathing dogs, you know, no soft pads, stuff like that. You know, sometimes, you know, it's baby steps, but there's a lot more of, as far as human error, that some of these dogs are dead and yeah. than, than breeding wise. You know, it's a lot of every summer you hear about dogs dying, it usually is the heat, right? Yeah. It's usually is the heat with the, the mistakes. Are, and I've seen like at least 10 posts and, and, and you know, a couple of dogs die of murmurs and then a lot of dogs die because of heat. Yeah, a lot of dogs can't handle it, man. And, you know, that's that's one of the things I always kind of preach, like, condition your dog as much as possible during the right times, you know, like Bravado, we work out in the morning really early, like super early and short, short, short periods at a time. You know, it's no, never nothing long. We get wins. We get, if I can extend his workout in a, a minute more, I can already see his conditioning and recovery ability just completely change. And then putting the right foods in, 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 in your dog's body is pivotal, man. You know, you have these, 
people always kind of looking at nutrition, looking for the cheapest things, um, the best of the cheapest things, right? But it's still, it's still cheap, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I, I get it, but... Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's just overfeeding as well. You know what I yeah. mean? It's just like, yeah. in the summer, we cut back a lot, a lot of our feedings and stuff like that because... You know, a, a hot dog and a fat dog doesn't doesn't go well together. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then we Absolutely. give our dog a lot of water. You know what I mean? A lot of water. So, so all right. So we're gonna do some giveaway stuff. I'm gonna. I thought I could get it on the TV. My girl had a little bit of issues with it, so we're gonna go ahead and pull one right here. And so, these are everybody who entered. And so, how how you were able to enter is that you just had to share this in your story <laughs> and tag us. So, the first product that we're gonna give away was the first. Muscle Bully product, which is a 60 tablet bottle of the Vita Bully. And then after we run this wheel, Zach will look up a question. Feel free to ask a question, guys. And Zach is going to read off a question to Khan, and Khan will answer it after we select the winner. So here we go. Good luck. Oh, shit. I need to edit this wheel. All right. Stephanie underscore Big Mike Bullies. I know you're probably on here. Message us. Let us know that you won the Vita Bully 60 tablet, and I'm going to write it down, and Zach's going to feed Khan a question. This is a good idea. I like that. Um, this guy said, how long does it take for the Rocco blood to pop? What blood goes best with Rocco blood, and how do you pull mass for head while using Rocco blood? So it's like a three-part question, really. <laughs> Rocket blood usually pops starting starting at ten months. Uh, what was the other two questions? <clears throat> uh, how would you agree to uh, where did it go? Where did it go? There's still so many like, constant questions popping through. <laughs> Hollywood say pops right away. That's funny. Uh, don't do one. Here it goes. How do you how to pull mass and head while using the Rocco blood? You have to look at the bitches in 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 the pedigree. Yeah, that's <laughs> vital it's, part. It's, I think a lot of people grasp like. Yeah, like it's the, it's you have to look at the bitches and then look at her dad or her mom. Her what, mom. what kind of size uh, do they carry? Usually, it's the the bitches that will bring all that out. All right. So next spin, we're going to give away um, the Muscle Bully Muscle Building Chews. Um, this is a great product, especially if you want uh, to have a competitive advantage in the show ring. So good luck. Let's see uh, who's going to win this. I increased the wheel time to 69 seconds. Khan's favorite number. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am done. And we got a lot of stuff to give away, guys. We're going to be giving away a bunch of Muscle Bully products and um, some x Dog equipment. So Here we go. Here we go. Who's the winner? Who's it going to be? Don't tell me it's her again. Oh, he passed her up. <laughs> yeah, this was. Oh, X. oh boy, this is crazy. Go, go, go. Keep going. <laughs> It's bully camp. Oh! 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 Wait, what? You almost, you almost had a camp, bully. What's that? CRV Tech. Uh oh. 805, it looks like. 805, Nova Kane, bully. Oh. That's crazy. Long, bro. <laughs> All right, 805, you, you win that. Um, MGK <clears throat> Kennel, I'm going to put you in right now. Sorry, we had a collapse, so we'll get you in. How All the you, good stuff's still coming, so don't worry. How do you feel about breeders adding the Merle blood? Uh, it doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? They can do uh, the Merle blood. I, 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 it's like I said, if we had DNA profile and stuff like that, the Merle blood would not even be as relevant as it is today. You know what I mean? But, it, but they're, all, they're in it now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, I personally don't like the the color or the pattern of Merle's as far as like my 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 taste and stuff like that. I I just don't like it. Looks to me, it just looks dirty to me. Yeah. You know I mean, it looks dirty to me. But 
people like it, not, not everybody gonna have the same same taste in dogs. You know what I mean? But they can breed it all the and you know whatever. It, it, it's it doesn't it doesn't really bother me. You know what I mean? Because as far as I know, um, I breed for for me. You know, and and what I I feel is American bully, and they can do whatever they want. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so next one we're going to give away is the Muscle Bully Gains 45. If you're looking to add some mass on your dogs, this is a great product for you. And then right after that, we're going to give away the 90 serving. So we're going to do back-to-backs on these. All right, good luck. Here we go. And, yes, you can win twice, but most likely it probably won't happen. But it, it I don't know, man. We're giving it away. almost happened with Stephanie. Yeah. <clears throat> they said, what is this thing? Is Colossal TBD next Rocco? Oh, I think they're trying to say, is he going to be, is he going to be as big as Rocco? As far as breeding wise, probably. <laughs> he has almost as, he had, he's on a roll right now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he's producing his look. He's producing his width and everything. So He's doing good so far, so it's still too young. He's only two years old, so he's only been breeding for a year, and his kids are just turning a year, so. Is that, who's that? I oh, think it's going to be Highline. Yeah. Well, that thing's sensitive. Yeah, the last 15 seconds, so Highline bullish. All right, so let me put this in, and then I'm going to go ahead and spin right again for the 90 serving. Got another question? Khan, what do you think the XL bully community should focus on? Man, I don't really follow that XL community. I, I just think a lot of XL they don't look just bully. want the biggest dogs there is, you know what I mean? They keep yeah. getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. I think I think it's more they, they need to concentrate on one look of a dog now. I mean, it's it's still the, it's the same problem with the pockets and standards and stuff like that. But it's a lot more wider range, in my opinion, with the XL. I call them horses in there. You know what I mean? But yeah, huge, but bro. but there are really some nice XLs, and there's just some XLs that's just way too long and way too loose. Looking. It's just too much mastiff or whatever they still mixing in there. Yeah. It's too sloppy. I feel like you like you're saying it's just it's all over the place. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Is what, where did could it be go? Valhalla, or it could be Chameleon Canine. Where'd that one question go? Looks like Valhalla. All right, got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. All right, they got some good questions coming in. Is Colossal <laughs> bigger than Grimm? Mm, they're pretty much the same size. You know what I mean? As far as height-wise and body girth and stuff-wise, Colossal is wider. All right, guys, the next one we're going to give away, if you're looking to add more protein to your dog's diet, the Muscle Bully Protein 60 serving. Good luck. Here we go. Put me in the wheel. What the time? What made you decide to read to Lola and Boss? I'll answer that question right after the wheel, and then can I'll you, answer another question. So you can can you see the questions, Con? Yeah, I can see a little bit of it. Okay. Guys, oh, keep G these questions coming. G2 is it's way wider than any dog on the yard. It's the widest. Oh, shit. Here they come now. Uh, but it's like it makes you think it's going to stop and then it just like creeps. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Legaton K9. All right, Zach, find the question. I'm going to answer this question first, though. What made us breed Lola to Boston? What was, what was, what, what did we see, right? Well, 
me and my uh, my buddy Gabe sat down and we seen a lot of studs, you know what I mean? And we picked out Boss because Boss has one of the nicest head shapes that we ever like. We like, and he has the one of the straightest fronts we have. We like, which Lola is, which Lola has a lot of her muscle mass. She's really compact. And she has an amazing rear on her. That's where Rocco probably got her his rear from. So we put his his front front frame into Lola, and then took Lola's frame, put it into you know they, like they have to complement each other. They you cannot when people are breeding, you don't want to breed two faults together. You know what I mean? Like Boss was not strong in the rear. You do not want to breed another dog that's weak in the rear together. It's just gonna be messed up. You know what I mean? So we. Brad Lola with a, with a great rear set on her, and then with Boss with a great front. Lola, Lola didn't have the best front, um, and Boss was wide, and, and his shoulders were there, and his head is there, everything we like about him. And we put together, and it came out, and then Rocco was a product, and, and, and it actually worked, uh, and what we thought it came out to be, you know what I mean? And that's what we wanted, you know what I mean? And that's yeah. what we, that's really what, it. Uh... They said, when it comes to your legacy, what do you want to leave behind? What do you want people to know Khan for as far as your legacy? Oh, man. That's a long time from now. Yeah, I hate those type of questions because it's like... Anytime soon. Yeah. As far as right now, if I stop right now, um, that a dude that would share his shit with anybody uh, is just trying to get the fucking breed to a level that no one ever ever seen, you know what I mean? We're not, we don't want to be sad. I, I, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's really it, you know what I mean? I mean, I wanted to be known as a guy that, that share his bloodline everywhere, you know, not someone that's, that's, that's stingy with it, you know what I mean? I mean, you got to pay to play, but I'm not, I'm not afraid to, to help you out, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, why do you not inbreed? I don't like to inbreed because I feel that uh, there's just no reason to, you know, because my the the because as far as as consistent as my stuff is, um, I don't feel like I put it together. I did it twice, you know. The first time I did, I didn't like it, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. and you just, you got to test your blood out to see what's strong in it and stuff like that, you know what I mean? So I did it one time. With my buddy, we bred uh, Rocco back to his sister Hazel. Didn't didn't turn out good, you know. I didn't like it. And then we did, and the second breeding we did um, was uh, Rocco back to his daughter, which came out having some amazing dogs. Right, half of them were were, were not great, and then the other half were great. And I want a more consistent litter and stuff like that. So, but if I can do it with line breeding. Without all the other bullshit of inbreeding, why why do I even need to inbreed if I can if I'm you know if I'm already creating nice dogs without, without the other issue line breeding you know what I mean yeah but it yeah. came out with Magic Mike and Magic Mike is probably like if you if if if, if AKC came to my house and be like pick a dog that 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 represent the the breed I pick him <laughs> you know so... it, it would be it would be it would be him. Uh, they said, why did you sell Rocco? And what was your actual pick off of Rocco's litter? Rocco was first pick, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Rocco had a fault that, that I didn't like. Uh, uh, at that time, I was into showing dogs and counting faults and stuff like that and all this other stuff about perfect dog and complete dog and stuff like that, you know. And you look and, – and, and that's one of the mistakes that I've learned – to look past certain faults for the whole dog. That's preach that to people all the time. That that don't get stuck on a fault of a dog that 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 you don't like so much. Look at the whole dog as a whole. You know what I mean? If I started over again, I probably would never sell that dog. You know what I mean? But at that time, it was something I wanted. I was I was with everybody new out there or whatever like that. That they want the perfect <laughs> dog. And it just, it, it, ha it cannot have a fault, you know what I mean? So I go for a fault, and then luckily he came back, and that here we are, you know what I mean? I think you make a, a, a super <clears throat> that can also attest to life in general. Like, I made a lot of flaws in business from the very beginning because maybe one individual would, would find the micro problem in the product, right? And right. I would say, 
fuck, I got to scrap this shit and start it all over. Even though there's like 30 other positive benefits, they would yeah. ask like, hey, where's the 10 year clinical study on um, uh, how the X dog best helps with hip dysplasia, right? And it's like, there's no fucking dogs to even do a study on hip dysplasia and weight vests in general, right? And you're not gonna have access to that. And plus the vest hasn't been around for 10 years. Or they would say, man, I want a D ring here and I would switch it up. But when you start chasing perfection, that can paralyze you from even producing a product, you know? And so, you know, that man, kind, of, kind of segues with life in general, man. Man, there was a quote that I that someone put that, you know, they said, <coughs> what is it? Never chase perfection because perfection doesn't exist. Always yeah. chase excellence. And that's what is a quote that, that, you know what I mean? You yeah. know, that I like. Uh. So, so I guess the biggest thing would be for people to understand the difference between actual true show quality and using a dog for brute stock. Like you say, he might have one flaw, but he could still probably be the better producer than the dog that's in the ring. So it's like you got to understand brute stock from show quality and understand how to use it, I guess. I feel like that's people's biggest problem. Their pride won't let them. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody, like when I go to shows, I feel like sometimes we see dogs that we know shouldn't be there. But it's like it's the only thing they have, so they can't put their pride to be like, oh, I can't bring this dog. I, you know what I'm saying? I, I got to go. I got to go. And I feel like it's a you bad know, a representation. Of, you know what? That's one That's one problem with people, too, I want to say. You don't see me at a lot of shows because you know what? When I want to bring a dog out, it has to be, like, tip-top, perfect. Not perfect, but, like, represent the breed. You know, a lot of people like you said, have only those dogs and they want to bring it out and show and stuff like that. And, and, and when they lose or when they, they get, you know, why and stuff like that. It's, and then, or if they win, you know, then people will look at it like they get like, what, that dog doesn't even fit the standard and stuff like that. It gets all crazy in the, in the Facebook judging world right here. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, you know, some dogs, like you said, are better producers, and, and some dogs are better show dogs, you know? That's why, like, you want to be able to keep the brood stock stuff that you know that can produce, and then sometimes when you breed, uh, when you breed those together, you have an amazing show dog, but in, in the amazing show dog that you have, probably not even going to be producer, you know what I mean? You never yeah. know. You, you, would, you just never know until you, until you test the product out. But like a lot of these show dogs, amazing dogs, don't come out to be producer because number one, the people who have them think they're think they shit gold, so they won't share with anybody else. And then two is just they read two dogs together that that genetically doesn't match, but it just came out that way. You know what I mean? It came out. So it won't be able to reproduce that anomaly. You know what I mean? All right. So we're going to spin the wheel one more time. To, uh, well, we got other things. So this is the Puppy Natural stack. It's the first optimization stack on the market that uh, offers a, a super immunity powder, which also has muscle builders in it, uh, which you want to take advantage during that time when your dog is naturally generating and breaking down muscle tissue more than ever, plus a, a full spectrum multivitamin. So here we go. Good luck. Guys, keep these questions coming. We're loving them. Someone said, can you save this live? Can you even save this live? Yeah, we're going to save it, and we're going to post yeah, it, and right. we're going to boost it. You oh, guys will have an opportunity to check this all out. Yeah, we got some new questions coming in, too. Hey, look, for anybody that's been, like, no drama for questions, like, if you're on here with some drama questions, I'm skipping right back. To it. Like, I won't even acknowledge that, bro. So don't come with that bullshit. Uh, has Rocco ever been bred to an XL dog? Yeah, Exquisite Billies came out. The litter came out great. The dog had a uh, had a good height on them. They want to keep the height, and they put they they threw his color and his head shape and the bone on them, and the structure stayed the same. And yeah. He, they actually they actually cut the 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 back length a little bit, but the dog still looked XL. But he looked like Rocco's XL version. Ex uh, check them out. 
Exquisite Bullies. They did an amazing job. I think that was the only XL breeding that I know that Rocco ever did. And it did great. I don't know why XL people don't use them, but... Hey, you might have just opened the door. It's probably the 20K stud fee. You know? Yeah, you <laughs> might have just opened that door, man. Uh, I mean, I ain't... <laughs> I, I've seen, I mean, I personally seen Dave Wilson come to an ABKC show and tell all the XL breeders in the building, hey, you got to do better. Like, I watched it with my own eyes. Like, Dave was like, bro, I don't know what y'all doing out here, but this, like, XLs didn't look like this when we first started. And it's like, I, I think <laughs> the whole. You know what? That, that it's is. It's like, be, like is, you said, it's. That is the only, <clears throat> that is the only variety I, I said, I think. Is declined from the bigger dogs because when they first started American Bullies, they were XL dogs. They were big, big dogs, and I don't know what happened. You know what I mean? I don't follow, yeah. so I don't know what happened. Now they all over the place. You know? I see so many traits of different just dogs in the XLs. Like I, I see Mastiff so much. I see a lot of stuff. I fuck. I I feel like I see Great Dane in some of them. Like. It's just so big, like it's, like you said, it's so loose and so big. There's no there's no bully in that. Like the bully shouldn't be that just monstrosity of a fucking dog just like slopping through around. Like he should still be blocky. He should still be yeah. tight. Still be yeah. calm. Just tall, you know. Just yeah, tall. exactly. It just tall. Like, same, just tall. So like when I seen Grand Champion Dooley for the first time, he blew my mind. Like it was at nationals, and I was standing next to David Martinez. And is I was that like, the lilac dog or the fawn dog? No, nah, that's the black. Uh, he's a black XL, but when you see him in person, bro, he's like, he's like right there at the line. Like he's like fucking. And I see black him. dogs are hard to capture on on video. Yeah, black dogs then, are really hard to capture as far as picture wise and stuff like that. But in person, they're amazing. You know, I, mean, yeah. I have a couple black dogs that's it's hard to really capture on picture. Like G two, he's really hard to capture on picture. But in person, he's big. He's a big boy, you yeah. know what I mean? Well, speaking of G2, I got a question right here. This one's a pretty good question from Cliff's uh, Canines. What's the pros and cons when using Grim Blood? The do's and don't. How do you feel about a Grim daughter to a G2 son? That's I a mean, lot. Of Grim daughter, G2 son. I, I, that's just a breeding I would do, you know what I mean? That's yeah. something I, I don't have. I don't have a problem with that. Sound like a solid line breed. What is uh, the pros and cons, cons and do or do's and don'ts of Grim? Uh, I mean, it's really hard to say because Grim pretty produced a lot, you know, with a, a, a lot of a lot of very like like a lot of different variation of females. He's been throwing his traits, so I mean, it's hard for me to. I, I guess don't breed Grim to any more, you know, dogs that's. That's <laughs> like has a lot of more bulldog traits in it because Grim is pretty pretty extreme on that side of the, the spectrum, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I would I would keep Grim breeding to really muscle up females instead of the females that just have girth and no muscle definition. You know? I keep seeing this question a lot, but they keep asking if you had to give somebody new advice, what would you give? Somebody starting out fresh from the gate, what would you tell them? <clears throat> Okay, this is one thing that people really ask me about, and I feel really, really, like, a lot of people need to listen. It's be prepared to lose money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Be prepared to lose money. So, like I said, it's, when I first started out breeding American Bullies, I had a great job. I mean, like, low, low six-figure being a mechanic. You know what I mean? I did it for roughly 17 years before I, I retired from it. Uh I always had the money for the dogs, right? To take care of my dogs, whatever they need. And the second advice is go slow, man. A lot yeah. of these people really um, want to buy everything they see as far as they coming into it. And they see a lot of these people that's, all, that's been doing it for a while, making all this money, and they, wanna, they want this fast money and, and this fast breeding and stuff like that. It's, it, it takes a while to get followings it take a while to put your brand out there you don't you know you gotta beat the algorithm of facebook instagram youtube all that stuff just to get your name out there um but just go slow don't get don't get 10 dogs in a year don't get don't get three dogs in a month you know buy one dog and my best advice is buy a bitch and and save your money to buy a really nice bitch if, if it costs you 10 20 grand to get it off of somebody like 
like my my best advice is save your money and buy something somebody is, are not is not even advertising. Yeah. You know, yeah. What I mean? if someone's not even advertising that you come up with a bag that they can't they can't say no to, you know. But most of the time with those type of females, people would just want to co-own with you, help you out that they don't want to let go of, but they will do it because you have such a big bag that they'll help you help you out and help themselves out at the same time, you know what I mean? I yeah, I've seen a lot a lot of programs just turn to shit or just didn't turn out at all just because they they were so they were so stuck on what they started out with and trying to continuously improve and improve and improve it. Like for someone like me, like for example, this is what I, I, I pretty much did. Like I created a company. I started this company. I built it up, created this platform. And then I reach out to Khan 15 years later, you know, and you got someone like me who can come in and like he said, stack your fucking bread. I don't care if you have to mow lawns, work three jobs, Stack up 15, 20 grand and then go get the fucking dog that you want. And that yeah, you if that's to, what to you want to do, of. you know what I mean? If that's what you want, you want to be like, if you want to be, you know, you got the thing is you have to love dogs regardless yeah. of the breed. You have to love dogs, you know what I mean? And this lifestyle is not easy. I'll tell you that. <laughs> this lifestyle is definitely not fucking easy. People think it's easy, it's definitely not easy. You losing, you, you vacation time's gone. You're never really going to go vacation. That, for too long, no more than a week, if that, right? And then, you know, in between, you know, dogs getting sick here and there, you know, it's it, it's it's a lot of work. And a lot of people think like the easiest part is mating dogs together, and making puppies. The hardest part is whooping the puppies. You are in for a motherfucking treat if you do not research or if you if you're not prepared. You know what I mean? You're going to be in for a treat. You know, you're not going to have that perfect mom all the time. You know, uh, it's going to be some bitches that won't take pups and some bitches that won't produce milk. And you're going to have to be there for the next three weeks, bottle feeding every two hours and stuff like that. And, and some people are not prepared for that, you know, and some people don't have the drive and some people like the money, but they don't have the drive to push through to do it. Okay. I, uh, this uh, Kobe underscore D underscore bull. Um, is really adamant about getting this question answered, but this is how I look at competition. So who would you consider to be your biggest competition outside of your program? Question mark, same class. Competition as far as, as dog buys? I don't know, man. I don't, I, I, I don't know. I let everybody Most, do their own thing. Here's the thing. So. This is what I always tell people, and this is one thing I learned <laughs> from eight figure, nine figure, 10 figure business mentors. You never, never fucking consider or, or even worry about competition in general. If you're focused on competition, you've already taken your eye off the ball. Um, yeah. I used to constantly keep up with, with competitors. Um, and, and what I've learned is, is that if you're doing what competitors are doing now, they're like, if somebody is biting off what I'm doing right now, they're already two years behind me. It, it's not about respect because respect, I respect everybody in the game, but when you're at the top of your game, you're not focused on competition. You're, you're focused on yourself, which you are your competition. That's, that would be my answer. I don't know about what you, you know. I was, I was going to go off. I, I was, I had, I had the whole day thinking about, for some reason it came up this right here. It came up like that. Cause I was going to say a dog vest is not, you didn't invent the first dog vest, right? Yeah. No, no, there's the been, dog yeah. Vest. You just made it better. Yeah. And with you made it, making it better, you elevated the next competition, next person to try to make it your product better, right? Sure. And there's going to be somebody out there that look at your product like, what can I improve on this years yeah. and generations down the line from now? You know, it's just like, it's like, uh, you, you know, you focus on yourself and, and, and if that's your vision, what you want to do, and it came true, you know, and, and, and it's crazy. It's just, it's crazy just watching watching from when we first met to now. It's like fuck. Yeah, you know what I mean the the way the way the growth that you guys are having is is amazing, and I'm really really I enjoy it. You know what I mean? And the and when when I gave all those prizes out to people at the show, man, they loved it, man. Yeah, you know they loved no, it's, it. But you know that's the thing is like, you know, people who are successful attract other people who are successful. You you tend to want to be in the same circle. You know what I mean? And like you said, you've been preaching all through this whole thing. It's like. I think one of the biggest reasons why you're successful is because you just want to see everybody else win, you know, and yeah. that's the secret. 
you know, when Zach came to me, like, shit, dude, like, he knew from the very beginning, all I want to do is see this dude win. He knows it, you know, and I got, I get that vibe from him back. And so it just happens to work out. Yeah, I mean, you know what the thing is, you see, you want to see a lot of people win, right? Some people just don't have the drive and stuff for it to win. But you can't help them with that. You can only, like, guide them a little bit, but they, they have to do it themselves, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I will think... help you out to a certain extent, but I'm not going to hold your hand. I tell my, I tell my team that all the time. I will help you out whatever you need, but I'm not going to sit here and hold your hand forever. You know what I mean? You there, there, There's at a point where I'm going to let go, and you have yeah. to do it yourself. But don't get mad yeah. at me but because I already put you in the spot to win. Yeah, you know one of I mean? the – one of the biggest things I learned in business is that you can't expect those around you to care as much about your business as you do. You Bro, know, in your brand. I tell you that right now. Like I tell people all the time, don't expect people to care for your dog as much as that you care for your dog. So that's why, like, I rarely, like, do really co-owns co to people, you know what I mean? If I co-own some shit with you, I see yeah. something that I trust, you know what I mean? And yeah. I think I probably co-own five dogs. You being one of them. Yeah. Sam, uh, uh, we from Texas too, and then Rodney, and 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 uh, and my team. You know, whatever it is, you know what I mean. And it's crazy, man. It's just it's, it's hard to trust people to do for your dog as you would do for your dog. You know, it's it's hard for I have that kind of trust issue with my dog. So that's yeah. why I really don't breathe a lot because I don't want to put myself in position to just give anyone dogs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's give up some X Dog stuff, and we'll, we'll, you know I know all our batteries are fucking getting low, so we'll get this on the roll. <laughs> but right now we're gonna give away an X Dog Performance Parachute. This fucking product is damn, sick. it's going up and up here, yeah. man. Here we go. Good luck. Uh, Fina, I got a question when you're ready. We'll wait till after this wheel goes, y'all. <laughs> that wheel could be as hell, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who, th who thought of this wheel? It's it's called uh, spinnerwheel.com, man. It's pretty pretty badass, to be honest. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's very you, easy. Yeah, you, you can play put people... Fortune, you should play Wheel of Fortune music after, like, every spin. <laughs> well, I would, but you can't because, like, uh, Instagram Copyright? will flag, flag the uh, music. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's stupid. Yeah, this, you know how the fucking world is right now. Uh-oh. Nope. I'm not falling for it. Might be for X underscore file bullies. Nah, that thing will stop way up there on King Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, King Jojo been trying to get it all night. He was, I hope it lands on King Jojo. All right, X. Congratulations, X underscore file underscore bullies. Uh, do you focus more on Geno or phenotype? Both. You you can't have yeah, the dog. Can't have one without the other. You can't have the right dog. But when I breed, I I do look at the dog first. But as far as but as far as breeding dog wise, I even if the dog doesn't like, let's say like I said back to the anomaly thing, right? Let's say some somebody bred two classes together and got a really nice pocket dog, a really yeah. nice pocket dog, right? And he's really nice. He was something that I really like, and I think it's something that I really I won't breed to it because I won't put that uh, uh, genotype right back into my line because all my line is pockets or standard types. Like, I don't want, I won't put that right back in. I like the dog, but I won't do it. You know what I mean? I won't do it. I have to have both. All right. Here we go. We're going to give away an X-Dog resistance band. This also acts as a portable tug. Stay tuned for all the future videos as we're going to be posting on Muscle Boy on how to use this in X-Dog University. Yeah, I'm, I'm finna. I gotta order me one after I seen you post that video where you made it like a mini tug on the tent, bro. Yeah, I got some modifications to do to it, but man, it, in the future it's gonna be a portable spring pole. Yeah, I need. I gotta order one because I just seen you post that video. I was like, dog, I would have never thought it's of my that. My favorite dog in my yard, besides Rocco, at at, the, at this moment, uh, Juggernaut. Woohoo! Because <laughs> Juggernaut really is like years of work put together, and and you could you see him if you really see him in person, you know why. Could you see the bully breed as a whole ever in well, AKC or UKC? UKC is already there. They, they, well, yeah, you, UKC you know is I, behind. Yeah. UKC yeah. is actually AKC. really behind the American Bully already. Yeah. Um, they're, they're not catching up anytime soon. So UKC is irrelevant as far as American Bully to me. AKC, will it, do I, would I like it to be? The only reason why I like it to be is I would like it to be on a bigger stage. 
as far as Westminster, where everyone yeah. see the dog. But as far as like a a goal, it doesn't really matter. They're not really important. I think I think the ABKC and uh, and BBKC and uh, all the other BRC, we're already out here, you know, doing it doing it for the breed. So, you know, and... it doesn't really. It would be nice, but. It's not like a life goal. Yeah, it, yeah, it's not a must. Yeah. And AKC is, if you guys don't know, it's like critically political. And like, for example, you could have dogs from Europe uh, that are bred in Europe and over here. They could send a dog over here, won't win. Same bloodline, maybe better dog, but a dog that is here owned by someone over here would win. It's, it's just really political. Um, man, it's everywhere, right. man. Yeah, we got two more giveaways. Next giveaway is going to be the X Dog Drag Bag. So if you're looking for drag work and you don't want to get fucking screamed out at, at the park, use this thing instead of a fucking tire and change. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, somebody said, Dennis Vang said, "What do you think about my bitch to Big Papa?" Yeah, which one? The the one that the big red daughter. I I like that. That's that that'd be a hit. That she's really nice. She's probably one of the big best big red daughter out there, if not the best. Oof, the best. <laughs> she's really nice, man. It's she's really nice. I, I throw oh, like for anybody thing. that for anybody that wins or or whatnot, you got to message the Muscle Bully page, not the X Dog page. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, I just seen another five? question too. How how tall is Juggy? Uh, Juggernaut is a little under 15, so he's probably like 14 and three quarter at the moment. And 90 pounds, the dog's bad. <laughs> it's it not because it's just Man, bad. I hope they're I like listening. The um, somebody said, What do you mean by genotype or phenotype? Uh oh. Phenotype is what you can see. Like, if I like, like I'm looking at Stan, I can see his. Phenotype. I'm looking at Zach. I see his phenotype. He got, he got a beard. He got, you know, uh, mustache. He got, you know, whatever. Well, he's got some thick old freaking uh, eyebrows. You know, I don't. Jesus. Have he does. Stuff like he's that. Got, you know. He's got those like that. eyes. Stuff that you can see. Looks like he has down, down syndrome a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then and phenotype is what is what Zach or B myself and I carry inside inside as far as our DNA to yeah. produce that look. You know what I mean? And then if the milkman can't comes and the baby don't look like us, then the, then the, he's not a producer. The milkman is, you know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, somebody said, why didn't you promote Deadpool that much as a stud? Why didn't I put, produce? Because you know a lot of the a lot of dogs that's on co-own, I don't get a chance to take pictures and stuff with them a lot. Deadpool's on co-own, so he's far away, and it takes it, it's too much work to get. Yeah, and then my co-owner, they don't know how to take good pictures, you know what I mean? And stuff like that. So it's really tough. It's really tough for those, you know, it, for, for me to promote something that I don't have constant access to. All right, so here it goes. Last, last prize is going to be for an X-Dog vest of your choice, whatever we have in stock. Good luck. This one's going to be a little bit longer. Uh, what's your plans for Oreo, and do you think he'll be the next big dog for you? I'm going to breed Oreo to a few of my females in here. Uh, honestly, people who would, who see Oreo will probably see a pocket rocket because mm. he has that much bone, uh, that much rear, that much head, and that much neck. And he's just a black rock who's just a pocket size, you know what I mean? I, I like that dog. He, he's actually a really, really good boy. Do you recommend raw only or mixed with kibble? I, I, I mix my raw with kibble. I never had problems. Yeah, people always have a misconception on that. It just it's gonna it's gonna digest differently. One's gonna be a slower absorbing food source, and one's gonna be a faster absorbing based on moisture. So it it, it almost works as a time release diet. So your dog's gonna process the raw first, and then it's gonna generally break down the kibble afterwards. Um, if you do feed kibble, maybe you want to uh, soak it if you want to you want it to uh, to digest faster. But that's what that's what we do. I soak the. I mix kibble and the and the dry together, uh, the egg stock dry together, and then I uh, soak it, soak it. That's why, like, I soak it all the way up to the brim. All my dogs, from puppies to adult, 
they know how to drink the water first and then eat the the the, the solids after. So uh, okay. they're always hydrated. One that's the one of the things where you have healthy dogs. They always hydrated. Yeah, because, you know, Kibble's designed to be on shelves for fucking three years, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh-oh, 805 might get this one. He's been waiting all night. He might <laughs> got the big prize. He got it. He going to get it. Yep. He going to get uh -oh. it. Oh, Did we have a double quick. winner yet or no? Yeah, we had one double yeah. winner. But now no one's listening. We might have two if Valhalla gets this. Oh, he might get <laughs> it. Oh, he got it. Oh, yeah. that's bogus. That was close. Valhalla. Oh, man. That's crazy. All right. Well, they got to be messaging us before we get off this. So um, we won't take up too much more of your time. We, we'll answer, we got five more minutes. It's 825. We got five more minutes, and we all got to get to our fam. So um, if you got questions, start asking them now. <laughs> Do I feel it's harder for pockets to be standard? It is a little bit harder for pockets to be standard because a lot, a lot, of, a lot of people – uh, have have pockets that's not really correct, you know what I mean? It's uh, I think a lot of the preference look is 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 pocket, but the standards just look more fluent in the ring. You just gotta have that breathe the pocket right, you know what I mean? Some some pockets are just way too big, and some pockets are just way too small. You gotta have to, you know. I think I honestly think like just because he is my dog, I don't even care, you know, whatever you guys say. Juggernaut is is really there as far as movement, the look and everything, you know. I mean, and 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 people have seen them. So, yeah. All right, I got a question. If you had to scrap your whole yard right now, and there's only one stud you could start out with, and it cannot be Rocco, who would it be, and why? Oh shit! <laughs> I've been saving this one all night. <laughs> What's it? Oh shit! <laughs> Oh man, like dead or alive or something? Yeah, sure. Over. Just cannot be Rocco. Damn. I mean, I mean, does it have to be like so? Nothing related to Rocco at all. <laughs> no, it, no, it can. Nah, be. it can be whoever. It, it don't be. even have to be off your yard. Your yard, but it cannot be Rocco. Man, it's uh, and you know, all your dogs are listening right now, and so is Ruth. <laughs> man, you might have you might this live might end before I even answer this question. Man, it's 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 shit. Um, fuck. I have can I get back to you? I, I, you know, if, if I had to say something, if I had to say something, it would probably Dax because he's the goat. Oh, that, Jesus. Damn. You know, he's the GOAT. You know, I would love to own that dog because the dog's beautiful. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And the dog's beautiful to me. The, 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 I love a beautiful dog. Like, I'm a stickler when it comes to symmetry of the dog. Like, everything has to match and stuff like that. Like, Deadpool, he's a beautiful dog because his patches are the same, almost the same size. It comes down, everything like that. You know what I mean? And then I like a solid body dog. I don't really like the pie dog, stuff like that. And then Dax is just, He's just amazing. He's just a. He has everything that that that. Uh, as far as being pretty, you know what I mean. And then you, you, Dax is Dax, and you really can't say anything else. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's kind. Of, it's a common theme where when we ask a question, you know, uh, who's the most influential dog in the community, and it's always Dax and Rocco is always in the conversation. It's always in the. They're always both of those dogs are always in the conversation. Yeah. I feel like he's the goat, and and. I feel like Dax is. <clears throat> I feel like Dax. If if you go at this generation right now, because everyone says LeBron James the goat, right? Yeah. Uh, so I feel like Dax is LeBron James, or whatever. If they want to call him the goat, whatever. And then Rocco will be MJ because you know because Dax. <laughs> Dax is Dax is like a producer. He does everything right. You know, he changed the game. He, every all the hype and everything's around him. But Rocco is, is a more accomplished dog as far as producer and, and in in the ring at the same time, you know. And then, you know, I think they pretty much make almost an impact of themselves, their selves, you know what I mean? All right, this is a really good question from Bully Dot Blocks. Uh, damn it, sorry, there's so many questions. Bully Dot 
Block stop bulls. What blood would you love to see bred to zero? Um, I honestly think I I, I wouldn't mind to see some muscle tone stuff bred to zero. You yeah. know what I mean? I uh, because. I think zero have the structure, have the body and stuff like that for that, and I think Muscle Tone can keep that size for him. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I don't know if they've done it. Or, I'm pretty sure they've done it. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure they've done it. I have. I mean, he he started his breeding career not too long ago, so we'll see. We'll see. So far, so good for him. Yeah. Well, man, Con. First of all, I want to say thank you, man. You're somebody who really inspires us and me over here at Dog, man. Um, you're very influential in my life, not just as somebody I follow, man, but man, you guys, it's just unbelievable, man. Like, you guys send gifts all the time. That's just unexpected. One time, I got a box of freaking lobsters, man, and it was just like. <laughs> recently, my man, I need to buy a dog from this dude. <laughs> man, he's giving out boxes of lobsters. Water was a fucking rocking chair. I didn't say it. And you got us the rocking chair, you and Ruth. So I want to say thank you guys from the bottom of my heart, man. That, that I'm gonna utilize that thing out the ass. I, but I just wanted to publicly say thank you. But you man, don't, be, you don't be a breed, but you're gonna be team no sleep with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> harder than uh, whelping a litter is raising a kid. You know. Oh boy, oh boy, <laughs> raising kids is a lot harder for sure. But yeah, man, <laughs> 18 God. years of that. You already you experienced that. Know that. Anything that you need from us and to support your, your, your vision and your program and your registry, we're here for you. Don't ever hesitate. I got to get up to Chicago to come see you guys in person, man. And, man, let's continue to grow together, brother. Man, you know, you know, it's, it's all love over here, bro. Yeah. I appreciate you guys. Zach, it's great to meet you, man, for finally. Yeah, we'll definitely link in the future, bro. We'll, I'm in uh, I'll hit Facebook you up, man. Jail we'll for anybody that doesn't know, I'm in Facebook jail still. I'll be out in 20 days. <laughs> So that's why I haven't been active, a little bit active, or haven't shared all the stuff like that. So if you guys haven't seen me or or me liking your stuff or by tagging me, whatever, it's because I'm in still Facebook jail. Nah, you good. But yeah, man. Well, man, thank you guys for tuning in, man. And uh, let's do this again next Monday, man. I love y'all. Thank you for all your support. Appreciate you guys. See yes, ya. sir. Everybody stay blessed.